pain has reached epidemic proportions in America. I'm Dr. Paul Christo. This is Aches and Gains. Dr. Paul Christo is one of America's leading experts on relieving pain. He's board-certified, Harvard-trained, and a pain medicine specialist at Johns Hopkins. U.S. News and World Report ranks him as a top doctor and among the top 1% in the nation for pain management. Becker's Review selected him as one of the 70 best pain management physicians in America. He's listed as a super doctor for the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia area. Aches and Gains is a weekly talk show covering all aspects of pain and pain relief. The human impact is real. Older adults, children, and even infants struggle to cope with pain. But there's hope. And there are treatments that can ease pain and suffering. The show offers compelling stories about people who found relief. We share cutting-edge treatments from contributing experts, and we offer ways to help people cope with their pain. Welcome to the show. Our bones are built of living tissues. Throughout our lives, the cells of these bones are constantly renewed. Osteoporosis occurs when the creation of new bone isn't able to keep up with the removal of old bone. Bones then become weak, brittle, and painful. So brittle that a fall or even mild stresses like bending over or coughing can cause what is known as a fragility fracture. Bone loss is painless, but breaks in the bone can feel like a firecracker snapping inside of you. These fractures most often occur in the hip, wrist, or spine. In fact, almost 1.5 million fractures occur in the vertebral bodies of the spine each year. These fractures are linked to pain, immobility, spinal deformity, and disability. Our guest is Dr. Keith McCormick. He's author of The Whole Body Approach to Osteoporosis and shares his experience as both a patient who overcame 12 fragility fractures and an osteoporosis expert who's developed a nutrition-based prevention and treatment program. Remarkably, Dr. McCormick also reestablished himself as one of the best Ironman triathletes in the world. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Mylan Pharmaceuticals, Purdue Pharma, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Horizon Pharma, Pentec Health, and Boston Scientific. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. If you have any questions or comments for Dr. Christo, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. We're here with Dr. Keith McCormick, a chiropractor specializing in the nutritional management of patients with bone fragility. He's been in practice for 30 years and is a former member of the 1976 U.S. Olympic team in modern pentathlon. Dr. McCormick, welcome to Aches and Gains. Thank you very much for inviting me. At 45 years old, you were diagnosed with osteoporosis. I mean, that's very unusual to happen to someone so young. Well, it was pretty devastating. I was, had been an athlete all my life and on the Olympic team, did Ironman competitions. And when the woman said, you have worse bone density than a 100-year-old woman, I was pretty floored by that. I would be too. Keith, uh, osteoporosis is pretty rare in men, isn't it? Uh, that's what most people think, anyhow. That Actually, 20% of men will sustain an osteoporotic fracture within their lifetime. And even when I went to an endocrinologist, they were pretty confused by it, too, and they were looking for other reasons for the disease because they didn't think that it was possible, too, to have me have that low bone density. In your experience, how strong is the link between osteoporosis and pain? Five years ago or so, I, I did a little bit of uh, PR work for the National National Osteoporosis Foundation in Washington, D.C. And when I met with Prince Charles and Camilla and the head of uh, NIS, that was one of the questions that was asked of me as, do you think that there's pain with osteoporosis? And I am convinced that there certainly is. My upper back, my thoracic spine, hurt constantly for years. Yeah, even before I knew I had osteoporosis. Yeah, you know, it's rare for us to think that bone loss in and of itself can cause pain. Yes, and I think well, that's one of the, the main things when you're reading about osteoporosis. They always call it the silent disease because there are no signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. Now, the, the problem stems from the fact that so many people have back pain. And uh, a lot of people have back pain without osteoporosis. So the link there is muddy. But all I'm saying is, for me personally, I had a lot of thoracic back pain. And now that my osteoporosis is under control, I don't fracture anymore, and I don't have any back pain. That's great to hear. Keith, fractures are painful. Which are the most common in osteoporosis? I see both in my practice. I see a lot of patients for osteoporosis. 
and for nutritional consulting on that, both in the thoracic and in the lumbar spine, but even in ribs. And, and for me personally, I had a lot of rib fractures. You know, vertebral fractures can lead to extreme back pain. I mean, I've seen a lot of this in my own practice, loss of height of the vertebral body and, and deformity of the spine. And hip fractures often require surgery and can lead to death. Let's talk about both of those. Well, they, they can all uh, require surgery. Um, the, the, the major problem that, that really sets people back are the hip fractures. That's what lands people in rehab centers because they just can't get around. And, and when you get older and you have a hip fracture, you need somebody to, to help you take care of you. Well, I've had many patients come into me who did not know that they had a, a vertebral fracture we do an x-ray on them, and I say, geez, <laughs> your T8 is, is, has a compression fracture, and they're surprised at it. So some of them can be painful, some of them may not be painful, but every hip fracture is going to be painful, and every wrist fracture is going to be painful. Keith, talk to us about your many fragility fractures. A fragility fracture is having a fracture when you fall from the height of standing. That's the definition of it. If you fall from a a six-foot ladder and you break something, that's not a fragility fracture. Anybody would break at that. But a fragility fracture is is a a minor trauma and you break from it. I had about 12 within five years. So I had vertebral fractures, rib fractures, toe, foot. Um, I mean, I was fracturing all over and it didn't take much at all. I mean, I once I leaned up against a horse and broke a rib. Another time I just leaned up against a, a wall and broke a rib. Um, another time I was just running and, and I just bent down to pick up a stick and I broke a thoracic vertebra. So my bone density was a negative 4.3 and that's pretty low, especially for a 45 year old man who is pretty active. After I got under negative 4.0, when I got to negative 3.8 and negative 3.5 and so I never had a fracture again. But that doesn't mean other people don't. Everybody has their own fracturing point. Some people fracture at negative 3.0. Some people at negative 4.0. Everybody's different. Exactly. Bone mineral density is worse as the T-score becomes more negative. And to put this into perspective, your bone mineral density score of negative 4.3 was quite low. Severe osteoporosis is characterized as having a score of negative 2.5 or lower, as well as the presence of at least one fragility fracture, and you had 12. A normal bone mineral density score is negative 1 or above. Osteopenia is classified as a score lower than negative 1 and greater than negative 2.5. And finally, osteoporosis is classified as having a score of negative 2.5 or lower. When we come back from the break, we'll talk to Dr. McCormick about how painful, disabling, or life-changing his 12 fragility fractures were. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, the global leader in medical technology, alleviating pain, restoring health, and extending life for millions of people around the world. Mylan Pharmaceuticals, one of the world's leading generic pharmaceutical companies. Discover why at Mylan, quality isn't just a claim, it's a cause we've made personal at seeinsidemylan.com. Purdue Pharma, making a positive impact on healthcare and on lives. Reminding everyone to safeguard medications in their home. Welcome back. We're speaking with Dr. Keith McCormick, a chiropractor specializing in the nutritional management of patients with osteoporosis and bone fragility. Uh, Keith, tell us about your 12 fragility fractures and how painful, disabling, or or life-changing they were. For me, the hip was pretty uncomfortable. The vertebral fractures were pretty darn uncomfortable. They hurt for a year. Ribs, to me, are no big deal. I've I've broken so many ribs in my life that I, I don't even think about it anymore. In, in about, actually, in about three weeks and four days, it always seems like to me, they seem like they're, they're pretty good by then. The first three weeks, I hear them go crunchy, crunchy all the time. Uh, um, I've actually broken so many bones that I, I know what they sound like when they break. And to me, they almost sound like a little bit of air being let out of a tire, like that. And that's, that's my break, <laughs> I think. But like I said, I have not broken in probably six or seven years now. I mean, I'm an Iron Man and I do, you know, do things, do wild and crazy things. So, so pain for me is a little, little different, but you know, it was pretty uncomfortable. Uh, Keith, you're very lighthearted about it, but in reality, it seems pretty frightening. For me, they were life-changing because 
psychologically, I was scared to death. I mean, I was scared to death that I was going to break at every turn I, I made, any movement I made. And the vision that went through my mind was, I'm not going to be able to look up at the stars when I get older because I'm going to have a huge dowager's hump. I'm going to, I'm going to be so bent forward. And I've had patients like that that are, you know, just they can't, they can't, you know, stand up straight because they've had so many fractures. So I was scared to death. I had young kids. I was thinking, I can't go play Frisbee with them. I can't throw a baseball with them. That was where my fear lies. I can completely understand that too. Keith, before we go any further, tell us about bone loss. People don't think of bone as being alive, but it is. There's, there's a lot happening in your bones at every second, every moment of the day. That's where your red blood cells are being formed. That's where your immune system is being formed. They're, your bones are actually an endocrine organ that releases a hormone called osteocalcin that helps your insulin regulate your blood sugar. So your bones are incredibly vital to not just helping you stand up straight, have, uh, having anchors for your muscles, but they're important for your overall health. When the bones start having too much calcium leached out from them, they get thin, more brittle, and then they just don't have the structural integrity to withstand the forces of everyday life. There are certain fixed risks associated with osteoporosis, like age and female gender. Keith, what do you talk to your patients about, though, about the modifiable risks? I don't even go there. 37% of people with absolutely no risk factors will develop osteoporosis. I had absolutely no risk factors. Smoking, drinking, uh, excessive drinking, light weights of being under 127 pounds, various drugs like medications for diabetes, prednisone, even if they have no risk factors, I still consider them at risk for osteoporosis. We've talked about how osteoporosis is called the silent disease because there are very few symptoms that, that tell us when we're developing it. When do you recommend that we get evaluated for osteoporosis? When women turn 50, when they go through menopause, they're told to have a bone density examination to assess whether they have osteoporosis or not. To me, that's not the time to do it because the older a person gets, the more difficult it is to, to stop bone loss. You should have a bone density examination. Like I say, age 40 or so, that would help a lot. And for men? Um, I, you know, I, I mean, go out on a limb, but I still say the same thing. I was 45 when I was diagnosed, and I would have loved to have paid $270 to have a bone density examination at age 40 and found out five years before I started fracturing like crazy, and I had five years to fix it. Sure, I mean, you highlight the real benefits of preventive medicine. When we come back from the break, we'll talk to Dr. McCormick about the impact of inflammation on bone. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Endo Pharmaceuticals, a U.S.-based specialty healthcare solutions company that delivers innovative diagnostics, drugs, devices, and clinical data to meet the needs of patients in areas such as pain, urology, oncology, and endocrinology. Horizon Pharma, a biopharmaceutical company that develops and commercializes innovative medicines to target unmet therapeutic needs in arthritis, pain, and inflammatory diseases. Pentech Health, one of the nation's largest pharmacy and nursing companies dedicated solely to providing in-home care for patients with implanted pumps used for the treatment of severe pain or spasticity. Welcome back to the show. We're speaking with Dr. Keith McCormick, who's a chiropractor and who's developed a nutrition-based prevention and treatment program for osteoporosis. Keith, tell us specifically how inflammation affects bone and can lead to osteoporosis. The main basis for osteoporosis, and and people don't realize this, is is not a lack of calcium. As a person gets, gets older, 50 or so, it's 40s, 50s. The reason why they're losing bone density is not from necessarily lack of calcium. It's because of inflammation. And all chronic diseases is based on chronic inflammatory problems. And it will lead to diabetes. It will lead to heart disease. It will lead to uh, Alzheimer's and osteoporosis. And so when a person is kind of achy throughout all their joints and uh, their you know muscles ache, I know for me, my skin was even really sensitive. Body pain <laughs> is telling you that you have inflammation in your body and that will lead to bone loss, not to everybody. I agree. More and more, science is revealing the link between inflammation and disease, including pain. 
We've talked about the benefits of decreasing our intake of foods that cause inflammation and increasing those that fight inflammation in a previous show called Foods That Fight Pain and Slim the Body. Keith, how in the world did you develop osteoporosis? I mean, you were a member of the U.S. Olympic team. I mean, isn't exercise supposed to help prevent osteoporosis? Well, and that's a really good point. That extensive exercise is producing what's called pro-inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor. These are, are cytokines. These are uh, chemicals that in your body, signaling chemicals that are being let loose because you're engaging in really intense exercise and is setting up inflammatory situations to, to essentially try to help you get over the damage that you're doing to your muscles and stuff. But it gets a little bit out of control. Uh, these professional bike racers that are out there, Lance Armstrong and everybody else, they traditionally have a lot lower bone density than other people because they produce all these pro-inflammatory cytokines to such a high level that now they have bone loss. But you need a way to bring those inflammatory signaling markers down, and that is through antioxidants, eating well, making sure your body's alkaline. And so if you do all these other things, uh, antioxidants and, and green vegetables and staying away from cheese and meat and things like that, you will lower these inflammatory chemicals and help decreasing your chances of osteoporosis. But decreasing your chances, I think, of, of joint pains in general. Yes, but help us understand this one point. If we exercise, then you're saying we can develop cytokines, which are inflammatory products that can lead to osteoporosis. Yet, many of us in the medical community recommend more exercise for patients. So how do you reconcile the two differences? Well, and I think I'm just talking about extensive exercise, too, too, a little bit too aggressive exercise. As you get older, people do a lot of exercising to help decrease their osteoporosis. When you get to be 50 and 60 years old, you shouldn't be doing exercises because you think it's going to build bone density. It's probably not. What it is going to do, though, and why it is vitally important is it makes you stronger. It, it makes you more supple, more coordinated. And why is that important? Because the number one risk for breaking your hip is falling. And if you are strong and supple and coordinated, you're not going to fall as much. And in your book, you write about the value of both weight-bearing exercise and strength training on muscle mass and bone stabilization. Uh, Keith, before we go any further, give us the specifics about a bone density test. A person lies down on a table and the machine emits a little bit of radiation and then it catches it on the other side of you. And depending on how much goes through you, essentially, then it tells how much radiation is being stopped by your bones. It's very simple. It maybe takes 20 minutes to have done. Insurance pays for it if you're over 50. It, you would have to pay out of pocket if you're under 50. Dr. McCormick, I mentioned your book, The Whole Body Approach to Osteoporosis, at the beginning of the show. What's unique about it? It sets out a whole new paradigm from what is traditionally out there in mainstream medicine. The doctors typically don't do testing. They just found it, oh, this person has osteoporosis, and then they're automatically put on a bisphosphonate. What you need to do first is see what a lot of lab tests are telling us, and then if they're fracturing and they have a, you know, really severe bone loss, then you might want to put them on a medication for six months or a year. But if you don't have a baseline of these biomarkers to see where the person started out at, then you don't know if what you're doing is helping. So my whole thing is, do these different tests, do a, a C-reactive protein, do homocysteine, do a bone resorption marker. Let's find out what their state is right now so that we can change them as we go along. Now let's turn to treating osteoporosis. There are a number of effective medicines that are approved for prevention and treatment. Let's talk about which are the most useful in reducing fractures and pain. The problem with bisphosphonates, and that's the one that I think most people are on, this Fosamax, Alendronate, Residronate, Beneva, Ibandronate, Solidronic Acid, Reclast. The ones that you start having IVs and in, in infusions, three months, one year infusions, they're just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. That's their difference. Is there a real fracture rate different in, in them? I'm not sure there is. To me, the least invasive ones are the better. So I, I really like alendronate because if a person has severe muscle aches and joint pains from it, and that's not that unusual, you can just get them off. 
if you've been given an infusion of Beneva or Reclass, you might feel worse for a long time because these things stay in, in your system for, for a lot longer. Taking a, a once weekly tablet is, is a lot better if, if a person can and take it. Keith, you've talked about some of the side effects associated with uh, bisphosphonates, things like alendronate. At the same time, there's data that supports the use of alendronate in reducing fractures and pain. Yes, it does. It, it, it definitely decreases fractures. And the reason why it works so well is because it decreases the number of what's called resorption pits in, in the bone. So it right away decreases the osteoclastic activity. The osteoclasts are the cells, the bone cells that actually degrade your bone. Then the osteoblasts come along and build up bone. When you decrease osteoclastic activity by taking one of these bisphosphonates, you decrease the number of resorption pits in a bone. The less resorption pits you have, the harder it is to fracture a bone. So your fracture risk is actually decreased within the first three, four, five months of taking the bisphosphonate. After that, it's, it's not as helpful. Okay. The medicines called bisphosphonates reduce bone destruction and preserve bone mineral density. Your nutritional approach to managing osteoporosis uses something called resorption markers. These markers measure small parts of the bone that are eliminated through the urine. High levels of these markers tell us that more bone is being lost. Tell us more about it. Bringing those bone resorption markers down by using things like antioxidants, like N-acetylcysteine, alpha-lipoic acid, berberine, things like that. that. That will bring down osteoclastic activity. It will bring down those bone resorption markers. But if you fail, if you can't bring it down far enough, you can take a bisphosphonate and bring it down to, like I said, if it started at 100 and you can bring it down to 40 or so, we've brought in their risk factors, of the risk of breaking down, and then the person doesn't have to stay on it for, for long term. If the bone resorption gets higher and higher and higher, and you can't keep it down with nutrition only, then you take the bisphosphonate again. Because long-term bisphosphonate use is linked to osteonecrosis of the jaw, is linked to mid-shaft thigh fractures, it's linked to these adverse reactions, increased brittleness of bones and increased fracture risk after maybe five years of taking them. Take them short term and only when you need it. I'd like to summarize Dr. McCormick's recommendations on the value of nutrition in combating osteoporosis. In general, he advocates eating foods that will decrease the body's acidity, increase bone mass, and decrease bone loss. Specifically, eating less red meat, cheese, dairy products, eating more green vegetables like broccoli, kale, and bok choy, as well as eating more fruits like prunes. And Keith, for those who have painful fractures from osteoporosis and who are scared to walk or even move, what's your message of hope? They definitely can help themselves. They definitely can change things around. There's no doubt about it in my my mind because I did it. I know that it's possible, but it takes a lot of work. It takes changing their diet. It takes exercising. It takes getting out there and really doing something and becoming your own best advocate. It's, it's really important to have a really good doctor to work with, a really good doctor that, that will sit down with them and talk to them and, and be essentially their coach and, and on the same you know, page as them. Uh, but there's no doubt about it. You can do it if you, if you want to. Absolutely. Dr. McCormick, thank you so much for joining us today on Aches and Gains. Thanks so much for having me as a guest. Tune in next time when we explore another interesting topic on Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Mylan Pharmaceuticals, Purdue Pharma, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Horizon Pharma, Pentech Health, and Boston Scientific. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. The views and opinions expressed in this radio program are solely the views of Dr. Paul Christo and do not necessarily express the views of this radio station and Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, nor an endorsement by any or all of them of any of its content. This show provides medical information, not advice. Please consult your personal physician before engaging in any course of treatment or use of any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. Discussion of particular uses of products on this show have not been approved by any of the manufacturers of such products. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. Aches and Gains is produced by Tom Blair and Ty Ford. 
Elsa Langford is the technical consultant and engineer. Dr. Paul Christo is the executive producer. Thanks for listening. This is Aches and Gains with Dr. Paul Christo.